Hi darlings and welcome to a brand new video here on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a wardrobe. We are going back to the absolute basics. I have been doing a few videos on these kind of top level fashion basics on my channel recently. I'm going to build a playlist so they're all in one really easy convenient place and I've got a few more planned so please do consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of these fashion tips videos. I've been getting such amazing feedback so far that you guys are finding them really interesting and this is a topic that has been really highly requested. How to build a wardrobe seems like something really simple but actually there is a little bit of an equation to it. One size does absolutely not fit all so for that reason I've actually split this video into four sections and hopefully one of these sections will be absolutely perfect for you and your lifestyle. I'd just like to say before I get started that anything that I mention in today's video will be linked in the description box down below including what I'm wearing, what you can see in the background and things like that and just a super quick social media plug if you are looking for daily fashion inspiration or you'd like to see a little bit of my daily life and then I'd love it if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok I am Josie LDN I'll also leave those platforms linked down below as well so the four different types of lifestyle that I'll be discussing in today's video firstly those of us that work from home we spend the majority of time in our casual wear we would have a very different list of requirements when it comes to building a wardrobe to the second type of lifestyle which is someone that is always out and about on their feet this might be someone who is an estate agent, a lecturer, someone that travels a lot. Again, their wardrobe needs are going to be very different indeed. Thirdly, the kind of person that spends a lot of their time in an office, you're sat down most of the time, maybe you go out for the odd meeting, but most of the time you are in an office environment. And fourthly, the kind of person that spends a lot of time at meetings and at events. It could be someone that goes to a lot of openings. Maybe you actually work in events and you have to be a little bit smarter the majority of the time. Hopefully, most of you can see yourself fitting into one of those four categories but you might pick up a few tips based on all of them throughout the video. So for each of these lifestyle types I'm going to come up with a little bit of a ratio as to what your wardrobe should consist of. Let's start with those of us that spend a lot of time working from home because currently most of us are working from home so hopefully this will be the most relevant right now. The ratio that I would recommend is 70% of your wardrobe being casual basics, things that you do feel comfortable wearing around the house. 20% should be slightly more dressy items for those times when you have a meeting or you're going out for lunch with friends and things like that. And 10% just 10% can be work staples. Obviously this is flexible depending on your exact job, but maybe you're a yoga teacher, maybe you're an artist. We do spend most of our time working, so think about that when it comes to the ratio of items in your wardrobe. Okay, so a few things that I would recommend this lifestyle type having in their wardrobe. Let's start off with a pair of really fun flat shoes. Just because we're working from home doesn't mean to say we have to work in our slippers. I do a lot of the time, but then I like to feel a little bit more put together by wearing a really nice pair of flat shoes when I'm at the house. As I said, this is probably the category that I fit into, so I have a lot of examples here. I've got five pairs of fun flat shoes to show you. First of all, I like to call these my Aladdin shoes. They're actually from Nicholas Kirkwood. They are flat, very, very comfortable indeed, metallic gold colour, which I think gives them a little something extra, and the pointed toe is very flattering. Something in pink, of course, because that goes with my wardrobe. These are from Pretty Ballerina. Once again, I love to have mules because you can just slip them on, you don't need to do up any um, fastenings. Really comfortable, and yet again, add a smarter touch to your outfit. And then if I really want to be jazzy, I have this pair of Jimmy Choo sparkly mules. These do get the least wear of all the shoes that I've shown you. But if I am filming from home, for example, and I, know, and I just want something a little bit more jazzy then I will reach for these. Something else that those of us that spend a lot of time working from home might like to have in their wardrobe is a big oversized cardigan. It's really tempting to just wear your dressing gown when you're working from home, you want to be cocooned in something cosy, but an oversized cardigan does the job but it keeps you feeling a little bit smarter and pulled together. Equally we're replacing our pyjamas here with a kind of loose tunic style billowy dress, something which is really comfortable, easy to throw on and yet doesn't make you look like you're ready for bed. Something that I picked up recently from Zara is this broderie anglais dress. It is very 
very true to my personal style. I'm a big fan of broderie anglais and little dresses. It wasn't expensive, so even if I am working from the sofa with dog hairs, etc., I'm not going to get too worried about this. You don't want to be wearing a designer <laughs> billowy dress in the comfort of your own home. Maybe you do, not judging. But something like this, which is comfortable and easy to throw on, easy to accessorize, it's perfect when you want to feel a little bit smarter, but from the comfort of your home. A pair of comfortable trousers is also an essential here. If you're a regular here on my channel, you'll know my love for the Reese Tyne trousers and the French Connection twill trousers. I wear both of those on a weekly basis, if not daily basis, when working from home. So a pair of comfortable trousers, which are also smart, is another thing which you might like to invest in for your wardrobe. And then also, finally, a crossbody bag. It's just something really easy to grab when you do need to nip out the house. And if you don't find yourself leaving the house too often for work meetings and things like that, chances are you don't need to invest in a really big bag that'll fit your laptop and all your daily essentials in it, because most of the things that you need for the majority of the trips out the house can probably fit in a small crossbody bag. So what about if your lifestyle is the type of person that spends the majority of time at the office? So for this, I've adjusted the ratio and I would say you need around 60% work staples in your wardrobe. 30% could be dressier items and then just 10% casual basics. Again, this ratio is based on where you spend the majority of your time. I would say the best thing here is to generally stick with classic items. Of course, workwear items tend to be more classic in their style and silhouette, but then you can inject your personal style with statement pieces, statement colors, for example, depending on what you're allowed to wear to the office, you could be wearing your tailored work trousers, but with a really beautiful floral blouse, perhaps a really fun piece of jewelry, or maybe you just spend most of your time in a crisp white shirt, tailored trousers, and a blazer. Those are the things that you need to invest in. You're going to need something smart to carry all of your things to and from the office every day. So a lovely, decent sized everyday handbag is certainly something worth investing in when you are building your wardrobe. My personal favourite is my rose water, zipped base water from Mulberry. I talk about this all the time. It really is an incredible investment, very roomy, but also very secure. I would also recommend having a kind of do it all dress. This is the kind of dress you can grab that's suitable for work, but you don't need to really think about in the morning. On those days when your morning coffee hasn't started to take effect quite just yet, having a really smart dress is a great option because you don't need to think about how to accessorize it and what to pair with what. I have to say, because I don't work in an office, I don't have an example to show you, but I will pop a few examples on the screen here and leave them linked down below. Chances are if you work in an office, you've already got these, but if not, something that you should definitely have at least one or two pairs of in your wardrobe is what I'm gonna call your workhorse trousers. These are going to be your most versatile trousers that you can mix and match on a daily basis with various blouses, because let's be honest, no one remembers what trousers you wear to work. It's all about the waist upwards. So you can have a few key pairs of trousers that make you look and feel your absolute best and then just rotate the top half throughout the week. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a very needy little boy today. I'm just gonna have to hold him to stop him scratching the carpet while I talk. Something else that I think is really lovely in a workwear wardrobe is a bow blouse, a blouse with a bow on it. It's something really smart but also lovely and feminine as well. A great way of showing your personality within a workwear piece. I always find that Reese have some really lovely options. Also, brands like Ted Baker and Lily Silk look for really good quality materials here because once again, this is something that you're going to be wearing on rotation. And then something else that you'll need is a pair of neutral heels. It depends how much walking you do, whether you walk to work or whether you're going to slip in to a different pair of shoes when you get to work, but a pair of neutral heels is definitely something which is going to elevate your work look but still be versatile enough to wear on a regular basis. Next, those of us that spend a lot of time on our feet. As I mentioned at the beginning, this could be someone whose job revolves them being literally on their feet or out and about at meetings, um, meeting clients in various places, lecturers, estate agents, people that travel a lot. I would recommend the ratio of your wardrobe being around 50% work staples, 40% casual basics, and then 10% dressy pieces. Once again, thinking about how often you wear those pieces and having the ratios of your wardrobe accordingly. If you are moving around a lot for work, the first thing you need to consider is your footwear. I'd recommend a pair of boots. Again, it depends on where you live and your actual job, but a pair of boots tend to be the most comfortable for those that are on our feet for a long period of time. A chunky block heel usually tends to be a little bit more comfortable than a kitten heel, for example, and I would definitely recommend a neutral color so that it can go with as many pieces in your wardrobe as possible. 
Once again, I am going to recommend a dress for the same reasons as previously, but this time look for something in a stretch fabric. If you're going to be moving around a lot, up and down off chairs or in and out of a car or on public transport, you don't want something that's going to end up creased by the time you have your very important meeting with your clients. Look for dresses in jersey material or materials which aren't going to crease as much. Again, for me, Reese is a go-to place for knitted or jersey dresses in a wrap style, which I think are universally flattering. You're probably going to want to have a tote bag if you are going for meetings in various different places. Depends again on what you need to take with you, but if you do need to have a camera, a laptop or folders or equipment with you, a tote bag is going to be your best friend. So this is something that I would recommend investing in. Yes, of course, the high street has so many great options, but if this is something which you're going to be wearing when you meet clients, you might want to go for something a little bit smarter. Brands like Tory Burch, Kate Spade, they're really good premium options, but then there are some very bougie designer options like Celine, Dior of course, or Givenchy. These often go down in seasonal sales, so if you do find one that you love, maybe use ShopTagger or something along those lines to keep an eye on the price and invest when the price goes down. Something else that you might get a lot of wear out of is a lovely flowy blouse. This can be worn with comfortable trousers, once again people are going to remember the top far more than what you're wearing on the bottoms, but a flowy blouse is not just comfortable, it can show a little bit of personal personality as well as being practical for wearing all day long. And then finally, for those of you that are always out and about, if there always seems to be an event, an opening, or a dinner to go to, then your wardrobe should represent that accordingly. Your wardrobe ratio might want to look a little bit more like 40% dressy items, and then an equal split between 30% work items and 30% casual basics. I'll give my arms a rest while I show you a few examples of things that I would recommend for this kind of lifestyle. First of all, you want a comfortable pair of heels, which again, go with everything. I am going to recommend my Jimmy Choo's. These are so practical because they literally go with dresses and jeans just the same. So if you're going to something a little bit more casual, you can wear jeans, a beautiful blouse, and a pair of heels to instantly smarten up the look. But equally, this would look fabulous if you are going to a wedding or a special event of a slightly smarter nature. It really is all about the versatility, so I would recommend a metallic clutch. Metallic tones are often overlooked when it comes to neutrals, but a metallic clutch has something a little bit more exciting about it than other classic shades such as black, white, or tan. The Chloe Nile bracelet bag is an especially great bag for those that are out and about at events because you don't actually have to hold it. You can literally just slip your hand through, giving you both of your hands for meeting and greeting, holding a canapé, holding your work notebook, but still having all your essentials right to hand probably going to want slightly more of a show-stopping top within your wardrobe. Something that can be worn with practical trousers if you are indeed working. But then a silk blouse or something with a really beautiful statement pattern is a great way of elevating that look, making it suitable for your event. So I'd recommend investing in a few really lovely quality blouses. And then of course, your go-to dress. You're probably going to need a few dresses within your collection that work for lots of different types of events. Make sure you look for a material which isn't going to be too hard to care for. Nothing which needs ironing every time you wear it or needs to be dry cleaned, look for slightly more easy care materials and designs and colours which work for lots of different events. Avoid white of course if you are attending events like weddings and make sure you're keeping it modest when it comes to silhouette and how much flesh you're showing if the events you're attending are for a work basis. Other things you might like to have in your wardrobe if you do spend a lot of time out and about at events are exciting and statement accessories. These are really easy ways of making a more simple outfit more dressed up and also you can you're more able to rotate them if you are seeing the same people over and over again at these events, but also you can go for exciting outerwear or exciting cardigans, perhaps something in a really interesting material with a fun pattern in a fun colour or with really interesting buttons. Things that you can add on top of a slightly more basic outfit are great ways of making a simple outfit more appropriate for different kinds of events. So darlings, those are my tips for how to build your wardrobe based on a few different lifestyles. Hopefully one of these has been appropriate for you and the idea of the ratios has given you a little bit more of an idea on how to build your wardrobe. It's very hard to go into more detail without knowing your particular lifestyle, your particular job, and how you spend most of your time. But overall, do think about where you do spend most of your time and plan the ratios of what's in your wardrobe accordingly. So darlings, that is all from me for today's video. I really hope you found it interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you did, if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.